Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. How's it going everyone, welcome back to the Source Code, my name is Deshaun, and today we're going to be getting started on episode 6. So I think I have finally fixed my audio issue, not really sure what was the problem, I just messed with a bunch of different audio settings, and hopefully this works. So in this episode we're going to be looking at events. Now events are pretty easy and you can really get started with them pretty much right away. So we're going to go ahead and create a new class here, a new Java class, and we'll just call this my events. And then in this class, um, you gotta make sure you go ahead and say implements listener. And then just go ahead and import uh, org.bucket.event.listener. And now we're almost ready to go. So with events, every time you wanna use one, you gotta go ahead and say at event handler. Your event will not work without event handler before it. Now, this seems to be a big problem. You know, I'll look for people's code and I'll be like, you need add event handler, you need add event handler. Um, and it's something really easy to forget, forget because it's something so simple. But we're gonna go ahead and mess with the player movie event. So we're gonna go ahead and say public void, and now you can name you can name it really whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and say on move, and it's going to be a player move event, and then we'll call the event event. And then let's just go ahead and get the player. So we'll go ahead and say player player equals event dot get player. Now, pretty much any time that an event involves a player, you can go ahead and say event dot get player, and it's going to give you the player that it's happening on. And then let's just go ahead and say player dot send message chat color dot red. You are moving. And let's just make this green, just because it's not really like something wrong. So then, in our main class, we need to just go ahead and register this. So we're going to go ahead and say this. Dot get server. Dot get plugin manager. Dot register events. And it's going to be new my events and the plugin, which is our main class or this. Now you don't have to go ahead and say new events here. You can actually go ahead and make in instantiate your events class up here. So we can go ahead and say my events my events equals new my events, and then inside of here we can go ahead and say my events. So now if we go ahead and install this. Okay, so we can see here that our server has been enabled. So let's actually go ahead and launch our Minecraft here. Might be helpful. And this is gonna be a really short video. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right, so we're joining our server here. And we can see here that it's telling us that we are moving. Now the player move event works whenever the player uses the arrow keys. So let's just put a high in there so we can see it moving, okay. And it also works whenever they move their, you know, their cursor around. So this is super glitchy and, well not super glitchy, but it's going to be very laggy if you're using multiple players. Um, honestly, probably even like four or five players is going to get really, really um, laggy eventually. Um, so I wouldn't recommend really using the player move event all that much if you can avoid it. Or, you know, obviously do something that's a little bit more optimized than just spamming the player with messages. That's all I got for you guys today. In the next episodes, we're going to be looking at things like block break events and uh, all things in that nature. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and are you really not subscribed? If you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. Join our Discord. It's going to be a great time. See you next time.